In the past few episodes, we've delved deep into cosmology, building up the tools we need to really understand dark energy and its influence on the universe. Pretty soon, you'll understand as much as anyone, with the possible exception of people who are actually paid to understand dark energy. But before we get there, it's time for some homework. Today, I have a challenge question for you. First, if you haven't watched these three episodes, you'll want to do that. We live in unusual times. The balance between dark energy and matter in the modern universe is on the side of dark energy. The expansion of the universe has been accelerating for some billions of years now, ever since it became large enough for regular matter to dilute away enough so that dark energy dominates. But we're still very near that tipping point, so close in fact, that it feels like a huge cosmic coincidence. This genuinely puzzles many cosmologists. If you add up the energy in any large volume of space, about 70% of it is dark energy, and the remaining 30% is in the form of regular matter. And by regular, I also mean dark matter, which is actually most of that 30%. Now, these percentages aren't for some abstract quantity or influence. I'm talking about the relative amount of energy. So the number of joules, ergs, British thermal units, energon cubes of this stuff in a large volume, say a cubic million light years. Around 70% dark energy, 30% matter. So there's more dark energy than the other stuff. But there's something really weird here. These numbers are extremely close to each other. I hear you ask, how are 70% and 30% close to each other? I mean, 70% cacao dark chocolate is very different and much tastier than 30% milk chocolate, right? Thanks for asking, and I agree about dark chocolate. But if our universe were chocolate, which it isn't sadly, then it's only been deliciously dark for a relatively short period. Let me explain. In the Einstein field equations and in the Friedman equations that are derived from those, dark energy is described by a positive cosmological constant. If that constant truly stays constant over time, then it represents an energy of the vacuum. Its density stays constant, and so the amount of dark energy increases at the same rate as the volume of the universe. When the universe is doubled in size, there'll be twice as much dark energy, joule for joule. And when it was half its current volume, there was half as much. At the same time, the total amount of regular matter in any expanding region remains constant. That means the density of matter decreases as the universe expands. At some point in the past, there was a perfect balance between dark energy and matter. How long ago? Very roughly, it was when the universe was half its current volume, because that would mean half the current amount of dark energy. A given giant box in the universe currently has around 30 parts matter and around 70 parts dark energy. Half its volume, and it still has those 30 parts matter, but only around 35 parts dark energy. Close enough to 50-50 for an astronomer. How long ago was that? Well, the volume of that giant box is equal to its linear size to the power of three. We can think of that linear size as the scale factor of the universe. So the scale factor, the size of the universe, only needed to be around 20% smaller than it is currently for the volume of any patch of space to be smaller by half. Assuming a constant expansion rate, a constant increase in the scale factor, that means it was only two to three billion years ago. Blink of an eye, really. No, really. Dark energy has dominated the universe only during the tenure of life on Earth, although its effect has been felt for a bit longer than that. Think about it this way. Since the end of the inflationary epoch, when the universe was about 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds old, and around the size of a grain of sand, it has doubled in size approximately 100 times to get to its current size. That's 100 doublings of its scale factor, so its linear dimension, not its volume. It'll go on to double in size approximately infinity times in the future. Okay, so let's think about time, not in billions of years, but in the number of doublings. For the vast majority of those past 100 doublings, Dark energy has had an extremely tiny energy contribution. Seriously, practically zero. 
And for the vast majority of future doublings, regular matter will have diluted away and be an infinitesimal influence compared to dark energy. It's only right now that both have a measurable effect. Here's your challenge question. For how many of those past 100 doublings has dark energy had any significant effect? Let's say at least 10% of the energy density. And for how many of those infinite future doublings will regular matter and energy have any significant effect? Again, at least 10% of the energy density. And the extra credit question. Answer the question I just asked, but also tell me how many billion years ago dark energy started to have a significant effect? And how many billion years in the future will it take for matter to cease to matter? For the extra credit part, you can make some crude approximations to get a rough idea with only simple algebra. Or you could go ahead and solve the Friedman equations. Up to you. I'll choose three correct answers at random for both the main and the extra credit questions to receive space-time t-shirts. To be eligible, you need to explain your reasoning and show your work. Feel free to propose any solutions you come up with for this apparent cosmological coincidence. You also need to not give answers in the comment section. That will disqualify you from this and future challenge questions. Email your answers to pbsspacetime at gmail.com with the subject line, Dark Energy Challenge, within two weeks. We filter by subject line, so make sure you use exactly this phrase to be considered. See you next week for a fresh new episode of Space Time.